What is going on guys welcome back to the go tutorial series in today's video we're going to learn how to iterate over collections using the range keyword so let us get right into it all right so we have talked about collections in this tutorial series already and we've also talked about loops but we haven't talked about the combination of the two in order to iterate over the values of a collection so of course what you can do is you can just go ahead and say for i equals zero and i being less than the length of the collection that you're iterating through I plus plus and then you can just go ahead and say uh, whatever you want to do with collection I uh, but in most programming languages we have a for each loop so a basic uh, loop that iterates over the individual elements of a collection and if you want to do that in go you have to use the range keyword so let's look at an example let's say we have numbers we have a, an array of numbers and this is just an integer array with the values 10 23, 65, 77, 81, 92, 76, whatever. And if we now want to iterate over this collection, we want to print all the values, what we have to do is we have to say, or at least if we want to do that with the range keyword, we have to say four, and now we can get two return values, we can get the index, and we can get, for example, number. And it's important we have to say four index number, or just two variables, then the walrus operator, the assignment operator, the definition, the declaration operator um, equals, and then we have to say range numbers. This is how we iterate over the individual numbers. And we can just go ahead now and say fmt.println, or actually let's go with printf, and we're going to say value at index d is d. And here we're going to pass idx and number like that. If we run this right now, you're going to see that we get value at, okay, we forgot the backslash n in the end. Let's do that. I hope I'm not blocking. I'm not blocking, yes, success. This is going to become a meme, guys. I'm always blocking the camera and I'm always resizing it during recording. So you can see value at index zero is 10, value at index one is 23, value at index two is uh, 65 and so on. So this is how we can iterate over the individual elements. Now I'm not sure if we can just do it like that and remove that obviously. And just do it like that. I think that should be possible. Yeah. So no, this is not possible because we then only get the index. If you want to get the number without the index, you have to specify just an underscore because then it's more or less irrelevant. We're just saying that uh, it is not important. So we can remove that. This is how you could do it. Uh, the problem if you don't do it like that is that you're signaling that there is some index that has to be used and then Go is going to say, okay, unused variable IDX, and it's going to say, okay, you can rename it to an underscore because that signals that it's just a placeholder that you're not going to use for anything. So this is how you can iterate over individual uh, elements of a basic array. All right, so this is how it's done for the ordinary array and for the slices. Now we're going to take a look at how it's done for the uh, maps. So we're going to say my map is map, which is mapping string to integer, and it has the values, I don't know, A is pointing to one, B has the value six, C has the value nine, and D has the value, I don't know, 55. So this is the map. And if we now want to iterate over this map, what we have to do is we have to do the exact same thing, but the, but the uh, meaning of the two variables changes because now we don't have index and value. Now we have key value. So if I do for key value, and of course you can call this whatever you want, you can call this a b um, range my map, then we can go ahead and say fmt dot print f key s has value d backslash n key value 
like that. So this is a basic iteration here. And you're going to see that we get ABCD here has value 16955. By the way, the order is not always defined. Sometimes you're going to get ABCD, sometimes you're going to get a completely messed up order. So I don't know if we're going to see that if I run this a couple more times. Yeah, you can see DABC, sometimes you're going to get something completely different. Uh, so you cannot really rely on the order. Um, this is just one thing that you need to keep in mind here. But one thing that you can do here, if you're only interested in the key, so only A, B, C, D, you can just remove this part, and you're going to only get the keys. Of course, we can then not print a value, and we should remove the placeholder. So actually, we can, can just say FMT print line key. Uh, it does not work, obviously, the other way around. So you cannot just have one keyword here and get the value, but we have to do the same uh, Think. So we need to say underscore value, and then we're just going to get the value here. If you want to do it like that. There you go. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.